I am going to be making a recording of this. Um, so uh, we're going to be busy with the nervous system or finish up the introduction to the nervous system. And I just want to cover the reflex arc as well today. Okay, so I am sharing my screen. Um, and we've done most of this. This is actually taking a lot longer than I thought for this lesson. But let's go and let's just try and complete it today. So plus minus where we were yesterday is around this area. We said central nervous system, um, the brain. Uh, we took a look at the different parts of the brain and the functions of each part. And this is plus minus where we were. Okay, so let's start there from the uh, we uh, cerebellum. Um, or let's move on to sorry, not from the cerebellum, from the brainstem. Now you don't need to know the different components of the brainstem any longer, but it's important to know the the importance of the brainstem and just the basic functions of the brainstem. Uh, we normally see the medulla oblongata when we talk about medulla oblongata. We normally refer to the whole brainstem, so that's a scientific name, but it, there is a little bit more components to it, but you don't need to know those components anymore. It's the connection between the brain and the spinal cord, um, and it also does a lot of our coordination um, is also done in the brainstem. Also things like breathing, um, breathing and heart rate is controlled in the brainstem. So the medulla oblongata becomes uh, the spinal cord. It's made out of white and gray matter, just like the brain. But now we are shifting the two. The white matter is now moving to the outside and the gray matter is moving to the inside. Remember that the white matter is mostly the axons of the, um, of the nerve fiber and the gray matter is mostly the combination of the different cell bodies of your neurons together. It also contains cerebrospinal fluid. Uh, if you take a look at that word, cere cerebrospinal means that a fluid around the cerebrum and around the spinal cord. Um, and when we, when we take a look at um, having, if we have a lumbar puncture to see if we have um, maybe got an infection of the meninges, they actually pull that fluid. So a lumbar puncture is actually when they pull that cerebrospinal fluid um, to see if there's any infection inside there. The fluid cont uh, continues into the central canal of the spinal cord. Functions of the medulla oblongata transmits impulses from the spinal cord to the brain and from the brain to the spinal cord, responsible for involuntary actions uh, like breathing, heart rate, um, and swallowing. As the impulses move through the medulla oblongata, they cross over from the left-hand side of your body to the right-hand side of your body, and therefore nerves on the right-hand side, right side of your brain controls the left-hand side of your body. We discussed that already yesterday, uh, on Monday. Okay, then the spinal cord is a continuation of the brain on the one, on one side and the medulla oblongata on the other side. It is a cylinder-like in structure. It's found inside the vertebral column. Um, and I actually want to show you a model of this. I'm just fetching it from the back of my class. Luckily, I am in my class, so I can show you this. So I've actually got a model of it. Just switch on my video. Um, oops, Daisy. Okay, no. Stop share and then. Uh, open up my camera very quickly. Oh, no, it's locked. Here we go. Be surprised. Okay, so there is your vertebral column. And then there is the... Oh, 
try that again. Okay, my internet seems to be a bit slow. Let's try once more. No, okay. Unfortunately, um, I think due to the internet speed, it is, um, it's blocking me, but I'll bring it to class tomorrow. Um, then we can take a look at it. Um, I'm actually gonna put it in my bag right now so that I don't forget it. Okay, let's get back to the presentation. Okay, so the virtual column is, um, of the spinal cord is within the virtual column and um, it gives it protection. Um, it also protected by the layers, the, um, the meningital layers and meninges of the layers, the same as in the brain. And the spinal nerves enter and leave the spinal cord through tiny openings between the vertebrae. I'll show you on the model tomorrow. I'll put it on my bag right now. Okay, so the spinal cord has a very typical shape to it. That H shape that you see over there, uh, we sometimes say it's a butterfly shape. And you can see the butterfly over there. So that's your gray, gray matter on the inside now and your white matter on the outside. Um, and then what we find is it, um, what you need to remember is got a front and a back side. Um, and what we will find is that at the back, the, the sensory neurons will enter at the back, but the motor neurons will leave at the front. We've also got a very important structure over there called the ganglion, the dorsal root ganglion. Now remember, dorsal refers to uh, top or back, and then ventral refers to bottom or front. Uh, where does that get into? It's, it's how we, um, because we are bipedal, so normally something that in an animal that is towards the ground is now in the front of us, and um, then at the back um, or at the top of a normal animal is to the back of us because we walk on two legs. We bipedal. Okay, so this uh, this whole central the, the 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 structure of the spinal cord is going to be very important for the next lesson when we go into the reflex arc, um, and so. I think I'm going to end this presentation and go and open the new one because a lot of this is covered by specifically the reflex arc. So I'm going to open up the reflex arc presentation quickly. Okay. Please go watch the reflex action video on Google Classroom as well. Okay, so what is a reflex arc? It is a quick auto, um, automatic response to a stimulus given. And to be able to do this, it, it, um, it does something very specific, which I'm gonna show you in a moment. Okay, so about the reflex arc, it's a favorite question. Guys, this is a favorite question in the exams. Uh, they love asking the reflex arc, so please know it very well. So we need to know what is the definition of a reflex action and reflex arc. I just said to you, it's a quick automatic response to a stimulus given. And we need to know the structure of the reflex arc, the whole route from the sensory organ to the um, sensory neuron, to the in interneuron, to the motor neuron, to the effector. Okay, so there's a receptor, there's a sensory neuron, there's a dorsal root of the spinal cord, there's a spinal cord, there's an interneuron, motor neuron, ventral root of the spinal nerve, and effector. Those are the key words that you need to remember. These are the key words that you need to remember when describing the reflex arc. It's a favorite question to ask. It's anything between four to six marks in a question. So it's an easy four to six marks if you just memorize it like a parrot. The functioning of a simple reflex action is important using an example. The significance of the reflex action, why do we, why do we have a reflex action? 
it's normally to prevent the body from being damaged. And then what is the significance of a synapse, which we'll also discuss. So a reflex action is a rapid, automatic, quick, automatic response to a stimulus received by a receptor organ, normally the skin, um, as a, a, a favorite example. The reflex arc is a path that the nervous impulse will follow to bring that response to that stimulus in the reflex action. The reflex arc is described as a functional unit of the nervous system. And we're going to use an example here. So the example that we have over here is that of a, a person burning their finger on a mat over there, or um, they feel the heat. And so what happens is that we will experience the stimulus. There's a stimulus. The stimulus, remember the stimulus is going to get your mark. Stimulus is then converted to a nerve impulse, to an impulse which then is get sent to the sensory neuron. It will go through the sensory neuron into the dorsal part of the uh, spinal cord. It will make a synaptic connection with the interneuron. The interneuron will make a synaptic connection with the motor neuron. And then it will leave via the ventral root of the spinal cord. And the motor neuron will then activate a muscle to pull back the hand, to pull back and prevent the damage that is happening, uh, that, that is about to happen. Is the brain involved in this? No, the brain is not involved in the reflex arc. The brain only gets notified afterwards about what has happened and if there's any injury and if there's any sensation being felt um, but in the reflex arc itself there's no brain involved okay so this is by just a description of what i gave you in the previous diagram so heat receptors in your finger picks up the stimulus of heat the stimulus is converted into a nerve impulse. The impulse is carried by the sensory neuron to the spinal cord. It, it then goes in via the dorsal root of the spinal cord. It makes a synapse with the connector neuron. The connector neuron then turns the synapse, uh, 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 is connected by a synapse to the motor neuron. The motor neuron leaves the spinal cord via the ventral root. The motor neuron then carries the impulse to the muscle of the arm. The muscle is the effector. The muscle then contracts and the hand is moved away from the flame. The action of putting your hand away from the flame is an example of a reflex action. And the path that the impulse follows from sensory neuron, interneuron, motor neuron, that is called the reflex arc. Now, a second impulse will be sent to the brain via the spinal cord, and then we will only feel the pain afterwards. Um, it all occurs very quickly, milliseconds, and an example of a reflex action is controlled by the spinal cord. In other instances, a reflex action can be controlled by the brain sometimes, so like a blinking of your eye or sneezing and coughing. It's actually a reflex action that involves not the spinal cord, but the brain. You can think, you're sneezing, you're coughing, a blinking of an eye is in the head area. So those things are directly connected to your brain, not to the spinal cord. Now, um, a reflex action involves the spinal cord, spinal nerves and the sensory connector and motor neurons, a receptor and an effector. What is the significance? It protects us. It protects delicate tissues against damage, like in the case of a possible burn. Okay, so one more thing that I want to discuss with you is just the synapse. 
And here's a bit more detail. We could discuss the synapse already, but here's a bit more detail on how the synapse works. So the synapse, the transmission of information from one neuron to another neuron is done by the synapse. What is the importance of this? I told you guys already, it makes sure that we only get nerve impulses in one direction only. Okay, so it's a connection from one nerve to another. It connects the terminal end plate of an axon to the dendrites of the next neuron. It's a chemical messenger. And here are the steps that we have when we are activating the, the signal over a synapse. So one, there's a neurotransmitter that is being formed. Two, transport of the neurotransmitter, it goes down the axon. Third step, there's a release of the neurotransmitter into the synaptic cleft uh, or synaptic gap, as it's also called. There's an interaction of the neurotransmitter with the receptor of the dendrite of the next neuron. And then the, the neurotransmitter attaches and then detaches again. Otherwise, there's going to be a constant impulse and we can't have that. Then we have Parkinson. Uh, but, so there's an attachment of the neurotransmitter and a detachment of the neurotransmitter, a separation of the neurotransmitter with the receptor. And then there's a reuptake of that neurotransmitter into the axon. And then it, the neurotransmitter gets sent back to the cell body. Okay. So those are the basic steps of how a synapse works. You don't need to know any more detail than that. That's the detail you need to know. Okay, now, ladies and gents, uh, there's quite a few tasks that are now given at the end of this presentation on the reflex arc that you guys need to do for the next one. Please also do this last question. I know it says essay, but it's actually just a, it's just a longer question. It's not exactly an essay question. It's about half an essay. And so you need to do that as well. Please answer these questions. See if you cope with it. And then we will mark it in the next lesson and see how you've done with the reflex arc. Okay. We still do have some time. Um, can I see, are there any questions with regards to the reflex arc or any more nervous system questions? You're welcome to put it into the chat as well. I'm opening the chat now. This is not like you, you're not normally this quiet. Okay, then if there's, let me just make sure my sound is on, yes. Okay, then if there's no questions for now, guys, go do those activities, go do those tasks. You need some time to do those tasks anyway. So go do those tasks. I've loaded it onto Google Classroom, but what I'll do is I'll also put it quickly into the WhatsApp now, and then I will see you guys tomorrow. Thank you very much.